Model-based systems engineering has become a standard for systems engineers when dealing with the design and implementation of complex systems. Using international modeling standards and a centralized repository for applying those standards, Enterprise Architect covers the key aspects of the design and the implementation process, from the initial requirements, the architecture, through to the simulation, software construction and final testing. In this three-part webinar series, we will cover the reasons for using the model-based systems engineering approach, then look at using the core MBSC language in Enterprise Architect, and finally, look at the model and computer interpretations of these models and how these can be used. Given the complexity of the process and the many features that can be utilized, this three-part webinar series will cover this from a high-end view. The core topics that we will cover in part one are, what is MBSC? Why do systems engineers need MBSC? We will look at using linking and tracing in the model, ensuring conformance to standards, options for integration with other tools, look at extending a modeling language to suit a domain, and finally, running over the interchangeability of modeling languages. Part two will cover in more detail applying MBSC using SysML. In part three, we will cover more of the human and computer interpretation of the modeling used in the MBSC. System engineering is applied across a wide range of industries, including the aerospace, telecommunications, automotive, and maritime industries. In this webinar series, we will cover how to use Enterprise Architect to lay out the design using systems engineering standards, simulate the design, as well as options to generate code and test any software from design through to production. What is MBSC or Model-Based Systems Engineering? MBSC is a broad acronym that involves the use of modeling languages, different design methods and tools used to define specifications, analyze scenarios to be used in the design, and create detailed blueprints for use in the construction and the validation of a system being developed. SysML is described as an enabler of MBSC. It is one language that supports MBSC modeling. However, it is not the only MBSC language. There are a variety of alternative modeling languages out there that can also be used to apply MBSC, including UAF, UPDM, DODAF, and MATE. With UML being the base of all these, models using these can be interconnected within a repository of models. Given SysML is the more popular and widely used language, that is what we will focus on. There are many tools that can be used for systems engineering, ranging from document editors, spreadsheets, through to simple diagram tools like Visio. However, these are not formal modeling tools. They are disparate tools in that they are not integrated and cannot provide direct connectivity between each part or each aspect of what is being modeled. For example, you might have a requirement specification in one document that is not directly traceable to any diagrams used in the design or the construction, nor any definition of where it is used. Where there are still cases of a design process that uses disparate technical details, such as individual documents, there can be an interim process of migrating the external documentation into a repository while starting to use the modeling in a model-based systems engineering approach. Use of a proper modeling tool is not about just using it as a drawing tool, as a model creates and stores very precise information that can be analyzed and cross-checked against other aspects of the model, and check for consistency and completeness. It references detailed information in a clear format that is defined using global standards, and hence is readable across different organizations and different nationalities, making it reliable for exporting to parties external to your organization. In short, it involves a centralized repository of information that is directed towards modeling the engineering for your project. A really key argument for MBSC is that with a modeling language like SysML, there is consistency in the details outlining the design. For instance, how a port is linked or where an exact formula is defined for use in simulations. This ensures any external use of the model can be guaranteed to be interpreted in conformance to that standard. Further, it is very likely that a design will go through an iterative process of design, check, test, then more detailed design, etc. And it's critical that there is no detail loss between each iteration. Having each iteration contained in the same repository ensures this is maintained and allows for cross-checking details 
in one iteration against another. A key feature of a centralised repository that contains all the interconnected modelling design is the traceability of that interconnection. The tools for traceability can involve viewing the parts in a tree form, diagrammatically or via a relationship matrix. It is not just the traceability of a model-based design that is important. There is also a lot of stored data that is explicitly required to be defined when using modeling languages like SysML. These details can be queried via searches in the model and interpreted or graphed with respect to the whole model. For example, when wanting to collate details on the number of blocks and their allocation, or the verifications logged when testing of these, tests can be generated to a report or graphed or even generated to metadata for exchange using an exchange protocol or scripting. Also, with a centralised system, the impact analysis for requirement changes or design changes is faster and more comprehensive. Development of these designs can require stringent documentation and checking by peers and stakeholders. This traditionally requires a formatted output of the core details from the repository. The document formatting is often required to be consistent with the formatting and layout used by documentation in the organisation in the past. What Enterprise Architect offers is a user-definable document structure for laying this out in the organisation's format or via static HTML reporting. Where the organisation's methodology encompasses more iterative development, it is necessary that stakeholders and other participants are seeing and providing feedback in a more real-time scenario. This is where a web-based viewing of the model progress, along with options for outsider contribution and feedback, are critical. The core tools for this include WebEA and ProLaborate, which provide web-based access to view and feedback on the model in real time. Where the systems under design need to meet regulations or industry-based specifications like the automotive ISO 26262 or aerospace specifics like DO 178, there needs to be direct ties to these requirements. But if left as external documents and not directly linked into the model, these can easily be lost and hence not checked when testing. These types of requirements can easily be imported into the model repository and set as traceable source to the more detailed design involving them. When crossing between different phases of a project using a single source repository with a universal modeling language, the full details can be easily and consistently used as a starter for a new phase. Whereas with disparate sources of specifications and analysis, over time, there can easily be a loss of details, knowledge or resources, leaving an unnecessary outflow of cost as well as inconsistencies from one release to the next. Also, the model can be abstracted and reused. For instance, a complex physical data model can be abstracted back to the conceptual model, then reworked for the new phase with a new structure or new data system, all ensuring modeling is integrated across the life cycle of the product or project. Further, the details created in the repository can be consumed for operator training, creating user manuals as well as diagnostic and maintenance support, and in particular for logging issues to be addressed in the next phase. Enterprise Architect covers all these aspects from stringent conformity to these modeling language specifications through to cross-checking and the documentation to be carried out in a holistic manner based on a centralized repository. A modeling tool like Enterprise Architect provides a centralized source. Although powerful in its own right, there are other tools out there that provide features that are more specific to particular disciplines. For instance, mathematical simulation or CAD design tools. This is where the integration and exchange features are crucial for enabling a broad connectivity to these domain-specific tools. This could include common document tools like Excel and Word, external requirement systems like DAWs, Polarian and Jira, engineering-based math stimulation like MATLAB Simulink and Open Modelica, as well as CAD modelling. Further to this is Enterprise Architect's ability to extend a modelling language. SysML and any others can be extended to support specific needs. For instance, a block specialised for aerospace may be required to include altitude-specific attributes or requiring flight geopositioning. Any additions to specialisations of the modelling language, like SysML, can be included using profiles and MDG technologies. Here we have a profile extending a SysML block which includes latitude and longitude. 
Then on using this in an IBD, we can see that the values can be set for this as a part. The specifications covering SysML, UPDM and many other modelling languages that Enterprise Architect supports are all derived from UML. So there is a mutual crossover with all languages. Hence these can be all used interoperably. You may have groups within your teams creating models that need to use specifics in different modeling languages. However, any items in these models can be cross-referenced to other models. SysML is defined as an industry-based open standard and is not proprietary. It is available in other tools and is changeable across tools. Enterprise Architect fully supports that interchangeability. To summarize what we have covered, Organizations not working on an MBSE basis can be prone to having a system design that consists of loosely related spreadsheets, documents, diagrams and email correspondence that are not interconnected or directly referenced. With MBSE, there is connectivity and tight referencing within a focus source, a repository, that contains the requirements, the analysis and models defining structure and behavior. All can be cross-referenced and all can be documented, queried cross-checked and interchanged with other design and modeling tools. In conclusion, hopefully part one of this series has given you a good overview of the scope of Enterprise Architects modeling-based systems engineering. In part two, we will look more specifically at SysML, a key MBSE modeling language. In part three, we will be looking at human and computer interpretation of the modeling, including simulation and code generation.